Let's face it, film photography can be expensive, but there are ways to cut your costs. I'm going to share some of those money-saving tips with you now. So there are three main costs with film photography. The film, the camera, and the developing. Okay, let's start with the film. You already know the price of some films really shot up recently. B&H is charging $16.99 for a roll of Kodak Color Plus, and this is consumer-grade film. Portraits around that price, and that's if you can find it. So my first tip is to shoot black and white. Now, I know I may have just lost half of you, but if you're serious about cutting your costs on film photography, Black and white is worth a look. If you're extremely budget conscious, there's a couple of specific brands I recommend. Kent Mirror and Fomapan. You can find a 36 exposure roll of 35 millimeter of these stocks for under six bucks. And if you don't care about DX coding, look for Arista EDU film. It's rebranded Fomapan and sometimes it's even cheaper. Your price per shot's gonna be lower with 35 millimeter film than medium or large format, especially if you get 36 exposure rolls. Now, if you're dead set on shooting color film, you may want to look into movie film like Kodak Vision 3. You've got to deal with Remjet, but it will save you a few bucks. I don't bulk roll my films, but bulk rolling is another great way to cut costs. Okay, moving on to the cameras. Just like the film, 35mm cameras are generally going to be cheaper than medium or large format, unless you're talking about medium format toy cameras like the Holga, the Diana, or the Debonair, which are all really fun, cheap ways to try a medium format. They're pretty low-fi, but that's kind of the point. Jason over at Grainy Days has a great video poking a little fun at the Holga. I've got a link to his video in the description. So, one place to find cheap 35mm cameras is eBay. Do a search for 35mm film cameras or even just film cameras, filter for lowest price plus shipping, and see what pops up. You should find some cameras for under 10 bucks. Now, you are assuming some risk with this. Even if a camera is listed as working, you may get a clunker. I've been lucky. I've never had a problem with this. Now, for 10 bucks or less, you're not going to find a T2 or T3 or some other fancy trendy celebrity camera, but you will find some basic functional point and shoot, sometimes mostly plastic, but these can be a great place to start. Older manual focus SLRs look great and they're fun to shoot and they're also going to cost you a pretty penny. But if you've already got a DSLR, check and see if you can find some 90s or 2000s autofocus film bodies that are compatible with your digital lenses. I got this Canon Rebel S2 for $4.99 and it works perfectly with my Canon EF lenses. Thrift stores have kind of dried up as far as film cameras are concerned, but you can still find deals here and there so it doesn't hurt to look. And if you're in the US, you can check out Craigslist, but only meet up with the seller in a safe public space. I bought a lens off a guy at Panera a few years back. Okay, we've talked about film, we've talked about cameras, so let's talk developing. Now this is a tricky one. If you're only shooting occasionally, maybe a roll of film or less a month, you're probably better off just using a local lab to do your developing or maybe mailing off to somebody like thedarkroom.com. But if you're like me and you're shooting several rolls a month, you can definitely save money by developing film yourself. Instead of spending $10 or more per roll, if you develop yourself, you can bring your cost under a dollar a roll. I've got videos showing everything you need to develop, including step-by-step -step directions for both color and black and white, and I've got links for those videos at the end of this video. Again, developing at home only makes sense if you're shooting a fair amount of film because you do have to buy some supplies to get started, like a developing tank for about 30 bucks and stuff to scan or digitize your images. If you've already got a digital camera with a macro lens, you're halfway there. As part of the Frugal Film Project, each month I've been shooting a $5 roll of expired Acros 2 in my $2.25 Nikon N65. And my last two tips have to do with cheap film and cheap cameras. I got this slightly expired Acros 2 for 5 bucks a roll through an email offer from Adorama. Now, none of us like to get a bunch of spam emails, but my tip is to sign up for a couple photo retailers' emails or newsletters so you can get in on hot deals like this. The Film Photography Project and Freestyle Photo are good places to start. All right, my final tip involves cameras. I mentioned that I got this autofocus Nikon N65 for $2.25 off of eBay, but that was just for the body. I got the 50 millimeter F1.8 lens for my boss, who, like a lot of people, just doesn't shoot film anymore. I've gotten cameras from in-laws and other family members this way too. So my final tip is to ask your parents, ask your grandparents, ask your drunk uncle to see if they have any film gear laying around that they're just not using anymore. You might be surprised at what you find. All right, that's it. That's all my tips to help you save a few bucks on your film photography. I'd like to hear your tips, so leave them in the comments down below. Now, if this video inspired you to start developing your own film at home, click on one of the videos popping up on the screen now and I'll guide you through the process step by step. There's nothing to be afraid of. You can do it. And until next time, do some good, have some fun and shoot some film.